Finally getting around to doing a bed platform. We're getting rid of that IKEA special there on cinder blocks so it's the right height. And uh, got the dimensions of the, the queen size bed. They're always 80 by 60, so uh, doing it all out two by six. And like I said, the bed was 80 inches long there, but because of two by when you put two of these together, because I, you know, I need a headboard and a footboard, it ends up being three inches. So to compensate for this amount of material, to, so I get 60 inches, I need to do 83 inches at a minimum. But I want to add a little bit extra there, just for some play, wiggle worm. So 83 and a quarter. And I do that several times. And you, I get a square. That's a speed square, some people call it. I got a combo square there as well. There you are. And just do that a couple more times there. I need, for my plans, I'm doing, I need three boards. So I'm gonna have um, the two side boards and a board in the middle to help hold it up. So, measuring clock. Oh, I always screwed up. I gotta go inch 38 and a quarter. There you are. And have a cut session. Yay, cutting. I am putting, I am just using a simple butt joint. I'm using a three inch interior wood screw that's Phillips with an impact driver. I have a square, combo square, and a normal square. And I wanna make sure that this joint is true, square. And then I just need to get it. Of course, sometimes I think things just don't work out for me. <laughs> hmm. Maybe get rid of the cardboard. The cardboard? Yeah. There I go. Okay, there. Nice and square there. Oh, at least. Ooh, 
we're gonna need you in the battery out here soon. There we go. I'm gonna go for three. bees when I get the other side on there as well. Let's go until that battery dies. the frame so we're going to put the middle board over here so I'm going to find the exact middle and put the center of that board on the center here so I found the center of the board here on this edge and I found the center of the foot and the headboard so I'm going to put the center of the board on the center of the box and then from this point I'll build my um, lips to hold the um, well, the rest of the bed. Now I'm going to contemplate how I'm going to do the rest of this. So I cut the boards here again on the sides. I'm not quite sure how I want to do it and this is how I want to do it. I put five screws in. I feel that that should be enough. If you are an overbuilder, put more in. If you think it's overbuilt, I don't want to take one or two out. All right, now I'm at the point where I'm going to be measuring out these, and I got another piece of scrap there. I'm going to cut up another board, and then I'm going to have this lip here, and then I'm going to attach my um, nipple pipe nipples and the floor flanges on it. So I'm going to have one on each corner. I'm thinking one in the middle, although I don't think it'll be necessary. All right, I kind of found a space that I want. I'm switching screws to uh, the same kind of type of screw there. It's the interior wood screw there with the, I think they call it yellow or something there. Yellow zinc screw. And I'm just gonna attach the floor flange and it's a 
one inch uh, pipe nipple. That's going to stand for the bed. Repeat. Okay, so this is our bed frame. And let's see how the new bed frame will look like. Alright, now we're just going to reuse these to support the rest of the bed. That's where those went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of gold under the bed. <laughs> yeah, so this is our bed frame before. Right there. So here's our new bed frame. We can still put things underneath. Yeah, more space and you can get it more. It's pretty solid. Mm -hmm. That's what we had on the other bed. And it worked out so well, we're just gonna do it again. New bed frame. We will paint it later. Mm hmm. We're not in a hurry. No. Yeah, it's not as pretty as the other one, but it's finally a good height to sit down at the bed because it was almost too tall for me and I'm a fairly tall dude. My wife was needed a step stool to get out of the bed. Uh, plenty of space to go in and out of, and my toe clears. Well, you can see where the old cinder block was. Mm hmm. That's a bad thing to whack in the middle of the night have to get to go to the bathroom. Cursing. Middle of the night. She, the camera woman has heard it a lot. Well, I used 2x6 kiln dried lumber. Um, green was actually more expensive than this, so I went with the kiln dried. And I just went with 2x6 and just everything the same there. You could have. If you're doing this yourself, you can use 2x4 on the bottom, or you can do the whole thing on 2x4. It just depends on your budget and what, how much materials cost where you live. But living here in the state of Oregon, their lumber is fairly inexpensive because it's just literally out back. <laughs> um, so I use 3 inch screws. I use butt joints. It's basically like rough framing. Uh, I'm sure if you're a carpenter by trade or profession, this is horrible for you, but it's not going to fall down it's pretty solid i watched uh, a few youtube videos i felt that they overbuilt especially with one inch pipe nipples um they're, they're pretty solid they're not going to fall down and if you use four screws it's pretty good it's actually up against the nightstand over there because mm, we uh, just moved it yeah got a little more room over yonder mm -hmm. so this will work out pretty well I don't think I put my shoes under the bed. Yeah. yeah, the other bed was, well, had it for years and just got it all set from Ikea because I liked the way it looked. But uh, things have changed. So, uh, you just couldn't store anything under that bed other than shoes. And it just, like, like we, we got both our suitcases in there and plenty of room to store other big stuff totes and whatnot and winter clothing. This is like this is a large area that you always have to clean up for bed and now we can store stuff under it. So maybe we'll figure out something to do around here. I don't know, we'll staple fabric around it there so it drapes down and looks pretty. I mean many things that you can do. So we will keep it posted and next up for this room remodel 
it's been a long time. Last we started was October, and then you know holidays and eh, other things happen. Uh, but the next step is to improve the lighting and put the sconce lights up. And now that we have the bed height, well, it's about even with the nightstand. Yeah, that's good height, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep that. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for watching. Um, using impact driver, that's one thing too. This just makes the job a whole lot easier because if you use a drill, what's going to happen to you doesn't matter what kind of bit you use, it's going to want to cam out. If you use an impact driver, it'll drive that screw in real easy. Uh, there's footage before, you'll see. That's that's all. That was the trick, the impact driver. So you can use whatever screw head you want or whatever's available for you and the cheapest and the cost. That'll do fine. And yeah, I did three screws on the end. Two probably would have worked. And then I went, uh, I put two screws here. These boards aren't, they're there just to use material on this one whole lift. But really, I think I could have done it now with the board there in the end and the board in the middle. And that would have been plenty of support looking at it now. But eh, it's done now. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, please comment down below. And uh, thank you for watching. And please subscribe and thumbs up.